I'm glad you could join me for virtual children's church this morning. And I'm Kate Longacre, and I'm here with uh, Fort Town Community Church Group. Well, actually, they're not here. It's just me. It's me and Sid. And, um, yeah, so um, this week we're going to be talking some more about the Beatitudes. Remember how Jesus was up on the mountain teaching the people about the Beatitudes? There was a whole bunch of them. And today we're going to look at Matthew 5, 10. And when God, when Jesus said, God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Matthew 5, 10. Can you guys say that with me? God blesses those who who are persecuted for doing right. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Oh no, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. I'm trying I'm remembering it in a different version. This I, I usually memorize it in King James, but anyway, so uh, let's do it again. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Matthew five ten. What does that mean? Persecuted. Well, let's see. Oh. I think it means. Well, there's another part of that scripture. I mean, it goes on. The next verse kind of clarifies it. It says, uh, Revile when you're reviled, and people say all kinds of evil against you falsely. And the next verse says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Did I read that right? What? I must have wrote that down. For great is your reward in heaven. Wait a minute. How can that be? How can you be rejoice and be glad when somebody's saying bad things about you and persecuting you? I think I better look that up. Maybe I wrote it down wrong. Okay. Let's look it up. Can you get your Bibles? You get your Bibles out and look it up too. Matthew 5, let's see, Matthew 5, 10, 11, and 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is King James. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceedingly glad it does say that for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you what did he mean by that how can that be how on earth can you be happy and be rejoicing when somebody is being mean to you Oh, I get it. The key. Great is your reward in heaven. Oh, in heaven. But you can be happy here too, right? Maybe. Let's think about that. How on earth does that work? Hmm. What do you think Jesus meant? Really? And that's hard to understand, isn't it? What does blessed mean, anyway? Ah, I looked that up. It means to be fortunate, to be well off, and to be happy. I'm not sure how you can be happy when someone's not being nice to you. Hmm. Hey, that reminds me about... When Sid had that screeching monkey take his banana, and he decided to be nice to him. Let's find out what happened, and if the screeching monkey wasn't nice to Sid, was he? But Sid decided to be nice to him and do the right thing. So let's see if that made him happy. Hey, Sid, come on over here. The kids, kids are wanting to see you. We've got a question for you. Oh, hi! Yeah, there they are. Hi! 
I can see he wants to be in the limelight again. Yeah, I want to be in the limelight. What is the limelight? Oh, well, that's when you want to be front and center. And so everybody can just see you when, when you're on stage and stuff. Oh, yeah, that's me, front and center. <laughs> okay, Sid, hey, uh, remember that screeching monkey? Yeah. And uh, you was nice to him, and you um, forgave him for stealing your banana? Yeah. Well, um, what happened? Did he say anything? Uh, no. He just looked at me. He just looked at you? Yeah. He didn't say anything. Did he say thank you? No. He must have been in shock. Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. Well, how did it make you feel? I don't know. It was kind of weird. I thought he might say thank you and be nice, but he didn't. Hmm. Well, it made me feel good inside because I was good and I did what Jesus said to be nice to those who are not nice to you. Hmm, well, that's good. Yeah. Have you ever had somebody, like, be mean to you when you were nice to them? Well, kind of. Well, you know, I had this other guy named Charlie, and he told me I shouldn't be nice to that screeching monkey. He did? Yeah, he said I should steal his food, because he deserved it. Oh, so what did you do? Well, I said, no, because Jesus said to be nice. But then he said, um, he said, no one will see you, and you get to eat his food, and, um, and then you can laugh at him, because he won't know who stole the food. So then what did you do? Well, I said, yeah, but God would see me, and I would know that I wasn't nice, and then I would feel really bad. Yeah, probably. You probably would feel bad. Yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't like that. So did he go away? Your, your friend Charlie? No. Yeah. Yeah, but he called me name. He called me Cutie Cat. He called me Cowherd. He called me Sissy. Hmm, how'd that make you feel? Um, kind of sad. Yes, I thought Charlie was my friend. But then he wasn't nice to me when I was doing the right thing. Yeah, it kind of reminds me about what happened to Jesus, too, huh? Yeah, that wasn't very good either. No. Hey, you know, I think I better go home. It's getting dark out, and I, it's going to take me a long time to climb that tree. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> thanks for coming and telling us about that screeching monkey. And uh, I hope that... Uh, he won't steal any more of your bananas. Yeah, me too. Okay, bye guys. Yeah, well that was that was good for Sid to come and tell us about that. Oh, that friend Charlie is trying to get him into trouble, huh? Tell him to do something. And then he called him names. And he was not nice to him. And it just kind of reminded me about what happened to Jesus, remember? When he, yeah, he was doing the right thing and... People said he wasn't, and they called, said he did things he didn't do, and falsely accused him, and then, remember, he got arrested, and they tried him, and then they hung him on the cross. They were, they meant that for really bad, but God turned it around for good. He used what they did for bad for good, and he brought new life. Which reminds me about when we have Easter and springtime is 
it's new life. I love springtime because it reminds me about new life and it reminds me about Jesus. Because after the cold, hard winter, then seeds start to grow, and plants start to grow. I got I got some seeds. Do you guys get some seeds? Are you going to plant some stuff in the garden? I got a bunch of different seeds. And, uh, you know, Jesus said one time that a seed has to die before new life could come. Got some little peas. Pea seeds. And they can't remain pea seeds like this forever. They'll just rot in the ground if they aren't planted right. But if they go into the ground, you bury them, kind of like Jesus was buried. And then you water them, you wait, and the sunshine comes out, and they split open. They have to die from this form of what they were to grow into a new plant and be beautiful. These are peas. These are just be peas. I've got, I've got some other stuff here too. But, but I also have this really awesome, beautiful flower here. It's a lily. Look at it. Isn't it pretty? You notice any? What do you notice about this lily? You notice its color first, isn't it? It's brilliant. It's not just orange. It's brilliant orange. And it has green leaves. And it has these little pods. When one flower dies, a new flower emerges until it's all finished. And then um, next spring, it'll It'll all die back, and next spring, it'll come up again. Isn't that beautiful? Mm, it smells good, too. Oh, it's a lily. There's a verse in the Bible about a lily. It's in Luke 12, 27 to 32. Let's see, I got it open here. I was prepared. It says, oh, it says, you don't need to worry about anything. When anybody's going to persecute you or say anything bad about you or treat you bad because you're doing the right thing, you don't need to worry because it says, think about the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. That means they don't go to work to earn money. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Solomon, King Solomon, who had, I mean, he was the most wise king and he was rich and had beautiful clothes but he was not anywhere anything compared to how beautiful a lily is if then god so clothes the grass which today is and tomorrow will thro be thrown into the oven how much more will he clothe you oh you of little faith oh he's saying you should have faith in god to take care of you because god takes care of those flowers, and look at how beautiful they are. Today they grow, and tomorrow they'll die, and we'll just throw them in the fire. He, he cares more about you than he does those flowers. So we don't need to worry about what will happen if we're doing the right thing. God will take care of us. And there's a lot of different ways that he takes care of us. And I'm going to I'm going to a picture of this so you guys can maybe talk about this at home um because i don't have it these are some little ways or some places that god can take care of you at home at school at church with your family when you're by yourself and with your friends how does he take care of you you guys can discuss that at home so maybe like at school he helps you with your schoolwork to pass a test helps you remember something you couldn't remember at home he helps you by providing um, a roof over your head right you don't have to sleep outside in the rain um and with your family you know he just protects you with your family he gives you family to love and friends yeah so anyway um I think that's it for today. I hope that you guys got a good lesson there and that we will remember to always do the right thing. 
and not worry about what will happen. Because God will reward you in some way. And even here, you'll get rewarded in heaven, but even here, it'll make you feel good inside knowing that you did the right thing. So let's pray. Um, so I'll bow our heads and close your eyes so you can hear God's voice speaking to you. We don't close our eyes. We close our eyes kind of just out of respect for God, but also so that we aren't distracted by all the things that we might see with our eyes open. Because we want to be able to hear the Lord speaking to us. And if we're looking around, sometimes we can't. Let's close our eyes, bow our heads. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for teaching us about what, how to do the right thing. And for reminding us that you care so much about us even more than the flowers and more than the sparrows. Help us to do what's right this week, no matter what. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that helps us, that guides us, and uh, that helps to teach us. It's our comforter and it can bring us joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, that's it. For this week guys and hey guess what we'll probably see you next week we'll be able to wave um not real close but we'll be able to wave so bye now <laughs>